The island of Sodor had been hit by strong winds, making life difficult for the engines. Trains were often delayed, if not cancelled, due to line obstructions. One evening, as the gale howled outside, the big engines were huddled in the shed, accompanied by Daisy, the diesel rail car. The wind is so strong, she said, it ripped the crossing gates right off their posts. Poor Thomas, he was still being re-railed when I was ordered to stay here tonight. I hear his front end was damaged something awful. Poh! sniffed Gordon. Count on a small engine to be impeded by a few toothpicks. Before Daisy could reply, Henry came backing into the shed, grumbling dreadfully. The kipper's been cancelled, he fumed. Bother! I was looking forward to a nice evening run. Not you too, Henry, groaned Gordon. I'd expect this from Thomas, but we're big engines. A little wind shouldn't stop us. Fat controller's orders, Gordon, Henry retorted. He doesn't think the vans can withstand the strength of the gusts. You're just being silly, Gordon yawned. You watch me tomorrow. I'll be right on schedule, whatever the weather. And with that, he fell asleep, leaving Henry brooding. Though still strong, the winds had lessened by morning. Gordon had just left on his first express run, but was not enjoying himself. Speed restrictions were in place, and no matter how fast he tried to go, his driver held him back. Calm down, Gordon, scolded the driver. I've already got the storms to worry about. I don't need you trying to buck me out of the cab. It's shameful. It's shameful, Gordon grunted, and begrudgingly slowed down as the wind swirled around him. Leading up to Edwards Station, the main line is surrounded by farmers' fields. One farmer, who worked closer to the line, had recently built a small shed for his equipment. He was pleased with his handiwork, but didn't realize how light the structure was. Too easily, the strong winds picked up the shed and blew it across the field. Gordon was beginning to feel uncomfortable. The winds had picked up again, and cold rain stung his face as he forged along the line. I can't see a thing, he groaned. That makes two of us, old boy, grunted the driver. If we could just make it to good grief, what's that? Gordon cracked open his eyes. A dark shape loomed on the line ahead. The driver slammed the brakes. He shut his eyes and... The remnants of the wooden shed clung to his front end, which was feeling rather sore. When the winds died down again, James came to take the express to the end of the line. With Edward banking him up the hill, the only engines available to help Gordon were Bill and Ben. You're a sight for sore eyes, teased Ben. Bent buffers, worn brakes, that's not the make of a proper express engine. By the looks of it, he wouldn't even make a proper shed, laughed Bill. Gordon felt too worn out to retort. He was moved to a siding at Edward's station, mournfully waiting to be taken to the works. He soon found himself being shunted out of Henry's goods train. Well, 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 chuckled Henry. You were on schedule, all right. Be careful in future, will you? I'd much rather see you heading the express than housing tools. For once, Gordon felt Henry's words were worth heeding.